Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. For today's tutorial I'm going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at this gorgeous cabinet. So we're going to be using distressing techniques, um, layered paint, chippy paint, crackle paint maybe, patina, colour washing, you name it, it's all going to go into this one project. Now the reason that I'm gonna go with all of that wonderful distressing is this cabinet has great bone structure, but the artwork, not my cup of tea. I love more aged patina and a little bit more matte in its feel. So all of that's gonna happen on this piece. I'm gonna try and keep it simple when it comes to removing some of the pattern on the front and we're going to strip it back just a little bit so we've already got that first layer of textured paint. So let's take a closer look at the overall project. So off we go. First things first, I'm going to remove some of the paint, hopefully try and take most of the design away. All of these bright garish colours, I don't want my paint finish to show to them. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a paint scraper. This is usually, these paint scrapers are usually really good for thick, heavy gloss paint. I will focus on the edges of the apertures of drawers, anywhere that I might distress quite heavily when we move into all of the other paint finishes over the top. I've also got a chemical paint stripper that I may try on some of the areas. We're just gonna use the um, scraper first, see how well we can take some of this off. Wish me luck, guys.
So that's just about all of the design removed with the scraper. It wasn't easy work. So I'm gonna go back in with some uh, varnish and paint stripper. I know that it will not remove everything from the surface. Always read the manufacturing instructions, the safety guide. Some of these products can be quite toxic. You need to um, double check all of the instructions on the back. This one's a pretty good one. I I've used it before. I can go straight in with a coat and then start stripping away after about half an hour. I'm pretty pleased with the amount of paint that the chemical stripper took off the overall piece. If you want to remove everything, then I would just do another pass. The same thing again, good old clean, sand it, and then you will be down to the raw wood. I'm happy to leave one or two bits of paint on here because it's all going to add to the effect. So I'm thinking about the colourway of the overall piece. Now, to me, this is kind of a bit of a French style kitchen cupboard, maybe. Um, so I'm going to go with a bluey grey tone, the overall piece. But I do want to tuck in other colours underneath. So I'm going to give this a coat of white because we have this creamy white there. I do know that this wood will bleed through, so it will probably go... Old white will probably go a little bit more like Versailles, but that's good. I'm happy for that. Then I'm going to add a touch of um, olive. I'm thinking olive and grey. That's my colour scheme in my mind. Maybe a bit of texture and troweling on, I'm thinking. So we get sort of layered dimension. I am going to scrap the crackle on this piece. I think it's just one step too far. But let's get those first two layers on and see where we are. I may change my mind on colour again. Let's just see how it looks with a little bit more paint back on the surface.
I'm really pleased with the old white base coat. Not much bleed through, I expected a little bit more. But nevertheless, that doesn't matter either way because most of this white is gonna be covered with other shades of color. What I did do with that white base coat is I lightly skimmed to one or two of the edges, not giving full coverage, so it's a little bit thinner. So if I do decide to sand back on the edges, that should reveal the wood a little easier. So now moving on to my next coat, and I'm gonna do this slightly different. I'm gonna be using olive, and I'm gonna apply this quite thickly, each panel, section by section, and heat it up with the hairdryer so it slightly dries off. I'm gonna drag my brush over the surface, so this will add some real wonderful texture. So the next time around, when we're using the overall color, we can use the trowel, and it will pick up in a really beautiful way, allowing some of the other undercolors just slightly to show. So on with the olive, and we're gonna start up here, just randomly random again, a little bit like the first coat. Don't worry too much about missing areas, that's fine. If you can hear in the background, the kids are in the garden next door, so I'm sure you're all used to hearing the kids playing on the swing next door. Um, I think the camera may pick them up. So I will leave maybe one or two white areas as well, because it's the final coat where we'll create the magic. Grab the hair dryer.
As you will have just seen, I've got really great texture to the surface. Now, this is gonna lead me into the next part of the process. And it's gonna be kind of um, suck it and see. Um, I am going to layer up some other nuances of color over the top surface of the texture. And how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna be using um, a few things that I've got to hand. Um, I might use a plastic trowel. You could use a metal trowel. Um, with paint on it just to slide over the surface and it should just hit the um, textural sections. A spatula to do in the thinner areas. Um, a piece of cardboard. Corrugated card is a great way of um, applying paint to a textured surface. So I'm going to use this with lots of paint on. I'm going to dip it into my mix mat and drag it over to build up some nuances of colour. I've also got my little autograph card. This is a little bit more flexible, but um, I'm gonna alternate between the three, including the brush, adding some brush areas to the surface and build it up, because we need to get paint into the crevice as well. So it's gonna be one of those things that is a kind of organic, building the paint up. I may scrape some paint off and then build another layer on. So I'm going to allow you just to watch what I'm doing. So let's get stuck in.
Well, I'm super happy with the way that this application has gone on. It went on absolutely beautiful. The cardboard was quite quick. The trowel really hones the texture and the paintbrush for the detail to push into all of those details. Absolutely perfect, really like the outcome. So what I'm gonna do at this stage is apply another nuance of color, just similar but slightly alter the shade. I forgot to mention, this was actually country grey and um, Paris grey mixed together. A little bit more Paris grey than country grey. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to add the country grey and quite a lot of old white. So we get slightly lighter tones to the surface. And then I think we're going to have to go in with an industrial sander to take some of the edges back, um, reveal some of the under colours and then a colour wash to soften everything. So. I'm going to mix up my country grey old white and then do the whole thing again. I'm now day two of my project and the paint has hardened overnight. It's now good for distressing. So we're gonna distress this piece quite heavily with a scraper. The scrapers have come back to this project. I think that I've used more of the scraper than I have the paintbrush on this project. But nevertheless, it's all about that aged worn patina over the whole piece. Um, I'm gonna start with a scraper if I want to go a little bit heavier, I will then introduce the sander to the surface, but we're gonna see how well this works by taking off the edges of any aperture where there is more wear and tear on the piece. I suppose you've just got to think about balance with this and how the piece would naturally get worn. So let's give the scraper a good old scrape on the edges and see if we can reveal some of that olive down to the wood as well all of those underlayers to create that beautiful age old look of worn paint.
So I'm just about finished with all of the distressing with the scraper and the sander. I'm really pleased with how it's looking at this stage. So I'm going to now move on to applying a colour wash or a stain, whatever you want to call it, in a sludgy colour. I'm going to mix up a colour of olive and en fleur, slightly more en fleur than olive, so it's going to be like a bronzy sludgy colour. And I'm going to apply this slightly different to how you usually see me apply it. You normally see me mix up the colour wash straight onto the surface and start removing with a damp rag. But in this case, there is a lot of paint on this surface and I want to kind of break through some of that paint, not all of it, but I know there's a lot of paint there. So I'm going to go over the whole piece with a water spray just to damp down the whole surface. Then I'm going to mix my colour wash and then I'm gonna come back and apply that. So some of the water will start penetrating and loosening some of the areas of paint around the edges. Um, cover up your floor, work outside. If you've not got a messy workshop like me, down here, I've got a big sheet. So that should catch all of the wet and color wash and I can take that away afterwards for a cleaner finish. Let's get stuck in with the spray bottle. So you've all seen me mix colour washes before and the strength of it is up to you how much pigment you want to leave behind. So I would say around 60% paint to, um, sorry, the other way around, 40% uh, paint to 60% water. If you go any um, less than that, it will become more opaque. So about 50-50 if you've already sprayed the piece like I have. So and I never measure, so it's just a guide for you guys. I'm just gonna tip some en fleur into a container and some olive, a little less olive, I think. And then a slug of water and I'm going to be using an Annie Sloan wall paint brush now the bristles on the on these brushes are really soft and it's got a lot of bristles so it allows me to spread the um, color wash very freely and it's messy this guys it will allow me to spread it all over quicker now I'm feeling this, I usually do it by feel. A bigger brush is hard to steer. There's nothing um, clean and tidy about applying a colour wash or even mixing it in this case. So it is kind of a sludgy pond colour. I'm gonna go with a little tad bit more en fleur to add a bit more warmth and then more water. I need to have plenty mix because I've got to do the whole of that small wardrobe. And always when you're using your colour wash, do the whole piece. That's what I do. I tend to work on the whole piece in one go rather than each panel because you'll get patchy wash. And also remember, whilst you're working with it, keep on mixing because 
the water and paint will separate slowly again. So it's kind of falling off the brush consistency. We will have a bucket of water to one side to offload if we feel it's a little bit stronger of colour. Stronger of colour? Hmm. Did I say that right? And there we have it. One nice colour wash. Okay, so I'm going to work the whole piece in one go. I have a bucket of water and a cloth down below, but we're, for now we're going to cover the whole piece. I maybe leave the top till last um, because that's got less paint on it and I don't want it to uh, remove everything. But I'm going to work all of the apertures of the doors any what way with my colour wash. It's going to look a hot mess. It really will destroy everything that you see at the moment, but it will come back right once we start offloading some of the paint. So off we go. So I know what you're all thinking, it looks so beautiful before, but I haven't finished yet. As you can see, I've started moving that paint around. The bucket is full of kind of brown water. I'm going to empty the bucket, another pass over with the cloth, but I'm going to only hit the higher ground and leave some of the darkness in the crevices. It's a little bit like dark waxing in a way, um, but I think it's a much softer look. And then we're going to go in with a clean dry cloth and start polishing things away and then we should get the crispness of the colour back. So my colour wash is just about dry, now time to turn my attention to the internal. A couple of notes to be made, you may have seen in the sped up video, I went in with the water spray, added a lot more water to my colour wash, probably added too much paint to the colour wash for this colour. Darker colours work slightly different, but just remember, nothing to fear, you saw how dark that went on. Adding a little bit more water won't hurt. Using your wet cloth to remove the desired amount of colour wash, spritzing with the spray, alternating between the two, 
and then finally finishing up with a clean dry cloth just to polish away any residue on the higher ground leaving all of the detail with the colour wash. You could use dark wax but I just think there's something more subtle and really authentic about using colour washes on this style of technique. So let's think about a colour for the internal. Now I'm imagining this as a kitchen pantry cupboard so I'm thinking I'm going to go with a soft blue colour and I'm going to use a colour again. I only just recently used it but I think it's a really lovely colour. I'm going to go with Svenska blue which is um, kind of a greeny blue, quite warm blue but pale which I think for a cupboard that's got quite a lot of depth it should really highlight the um, items stored inside. So I've got a big task painting each aperture of the cupboards so I'm going to speed everything up again guys so you can just see a few of the cupboards being painted and then we can address waxing some new hardware to the front. Um, another couple of things that I'm really loving about the project, um, the distressing. So I focused on wear and tear. So one of the places was this gorgeous little hinge um, that locks the cupboard at the top. I really love how that's come out. And about midway up here, I distressed quite heavily. Although the handles are further down, I kind of imagined if you're using this, you're going to push the hinge and hold the door a kind of about there. So think about where you would use the piece and where it would need distressing slightly more. I've gone for distressing on the internal panels rather than too much on the external. It's something that I don't normally do. I normally do edges, but in this case, I've kept the focus to the centre where I think wear and tear perhaps would be. I'm really loving how this is looking. So let's finish this off, colour inside, new handles, wax the whole piece, jobs are good. Un. about the whole piece finished with all of the paint. I'm going to go in with clear wax over every surface. I'm not going to use any tinted waxes. Um, the colour wash has done everything that I wanted it to do. I've chosen some new handles. Um, we've got these kind of iron, 
cast iron handles that are kind of a rusty color, which I think will look really lovely. Got to re-drill the holes. One hole was slightly higher than the other. Um, the interior, it's still drying. I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I love the color contrast. Really, really gorgeous. So let's finish this project off. Don't forget guys, if you're new to my channel and you like this kind of work, hit the subscribe button. Also, while I remember, thumbs up um, in the comments, leave me a comment, it really helps all of the algorithms. So stay tuned to the very end because you'll see the whole reveal at the end of the tutorial.